Hi, Karen Beers here today. I have a really fun project. It's a tutorial and we're going to be making this traveler's notebook using the Eileen Hall journal die. This month the inspiration team um, are playing with ThermaWeb products. So I have a bunch of that to show you and we're just going to, like I said, we're going to make this. I'm going to take you along on the journey. I apologize. The video is a bit choppy. I've made this in stages. And again, I'm just still learning how to do this. So um, hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get started. I've wanted to do this project for quite a while. In fact, I filmed one in December and just didn't quite get it uploaded. So I'm kind of excited about this. And this is sort of the intro, but basically in the video, you're gonna see the making of the book. I just wanted to go over some of the dyes I used and some of the products I used because there's been some changes since I filmed it. So this is the book. It's made using, again, the journal die for Mylene, which is absolutely one of my favorite dies. And I've made a closure that has the strap from the shopping bag and a piece of fabric as my wraparound closure. I took, <laughs> it's kind of fun, I took this suspender clip, um, basically mitten clips or suspender clips, and it, they come like this, and it just had a flat base to it. And what I did I attached, did. one of my favorite products uh, that I love to use is from a flare, but, flare for buttons. And it's a flare, a piece of flare. And they come in all different kinds. Like she has ones that have the, uh, make you turn it into a pin, and she also has the flat backed. But just to give you an idea, of some of the ones like there's donut shaped ones or donut printed ones and this one's called inspirational words I just really love using these on projects like this uh, this one came who now I don't remember which one was this lovely words 10 and you can see there was a couple and in fact I used another one on a um, I've used quite a few from this set but they, she has them in sets of like six eight and ten I think and I just really like her flair I use them you know I've used them on a number of product projects and if I need you know 50 of one for a class I can order them through her so that's why I'm giving her a bit of a shout out sorry for the glare but a lot of this stuff I'm noticing it's all shiny packaging so we've got a bit of glare. But here's another place I've used. This This was a, um, a piece of flare that came from that same kit. And I used it on this little art journal page that I've done. If you go to my Instagram account, which is at Karen Beers, they, I have, I'm doing this fantastic project, 100 day project. And that's one of the examples of where I popped it on there. And that's got some other really fun project uh, products on it. So go check that out if you like. I'll put the information down below. So in case you did not know, I am a member of Eileen's design team. I've been for a number of years. I'm actually one of her minions, executive minion in charge of minions, or president minion, however we say it, depending on the day. But um, so I am doing some work with her. And what's really exciting is one of our favorite companies to work with is the ThermaWeb. And as I said, this is a bit of a you know, crossover project, but I use their stuff all the time. It's great. And now conveniently, Eileen has some branded products through them, which is very exciting. And so this is a product we always recommend whenever you're building these books to, to create that super strong bond for the spines as we really want our spines not to fall apart. And so Eileen has that now in the packaging and you'll see in the video, I have this packaging. So this is why I'm giving you a little bit of a preview of what else has going on. The other thing we love to use is a foam adhesive and that's what I use to build my book. And ta-da, Eileen also has that as well. So that's very exciting. And Eileen's, they are six by 12 sheets. So they fit perfectly on through the Sizzix machine and you get four pieces in there. So that's great. And then the last one is also the Easy Cut Adhesive, which we're gonna use as well later on. It's how I adhered the spine of my book because I didn't want any extra weight on there and also how I adhered my little happy moth there. 
um, just sort of used it, cut it, um, put it down, cut it out, and added that on there. And it's super strong. Again, that's why I like it. And hers is again six by twelve inches and comes in four pieces. I know you can buy them. Eileen has an Etsy shop, and you can buy them from her on her Etsy shop and other places, I'm sure, as well. So how I finished off my book, I just adhered this with some glue. And then I, again, I have my ribbon wrapped around. And what I did was just punch an eyelet, which I show you how I've done the eyelets in the video for the spine, so I won't go over that again. And I just wrapped some fabric through it and I just pinned it with this pin and I'll probably add some dangly charms or something like that. But the reason why I like doing this is that means if my book gets fatter, I can expand my spine just by unclipping it. I've, I've kind of added overlapped a little bit. So I have some room for it in case my book, book wants to grow. But again, this is going in my purse. So the idea is it's not going to be too bulky. And then for the back, I again, I use the handle from the grocery bag. And for now, what I did was I just use a little bit, bit of Velcro. I'm not 100% sure this is how I'm going to want to finish it permanently. So this is a great way to just put something on as, you know, as an experiment and see how it goes for a while. I added the word journal. This was, this came from Eileen's um, die that is called journaling words and it comes with all these lovely words. And again, what I did was I just popped some cardstock onto the Easy Cut Adhesive and ran it through the die cut machine and I have an instant sticker. And then what I like to do, because it's on the cover of a journal, I just covered it with a coat of decoupage glue just to be sure that it doesn't get damaged. I also took the quote from the piece of paper that I used that you'll see in the video and I just sort of tear, tore it out and distressed it a little bit with Eileen's color blend. Again, Eileen's color blends are made by Colorbox, Clear, um, Clear Snap, and they're just these handy dandy and just choo choo around. And basically there's 10 times the amount of dye in here that would be in a normal sort of ink pad and it's no mess, no fuss. So that was super simple. Just outlined that a little bit. And then when you come to the inside, because I didn't, I, the video gets quite long, so and there's a lot going on because I show you how to build the book from start to finish. So that's why I'm just kind of quickly showing you how I finished it off. I did love this paper so much that I didn't want to put a pocket that would take away from the paper. So I took a second piece of the paper and I just cut out my pocket. And that way I can put, you know, receipts or my shopping list or grocery list or whatever. And I just added another word on there and the word is wander and it's hard to see it's basically another new product from thermoweb that we just got in so it's just able to pop that on there um, and it, this is called flock transfer sheets and they come in a multiple of colors so i just have a couple of the colors but these are two of my favorite colors it's almost like they know me very exciting and then the black velvet and what it is is it's just that has that flock look and it's on paper on the back so I sandwiched it with a piece of the uh, the foam because I did want to have it be erased a little bit and I sandwiched it and I ran it through my die cut and I got the word wander out of there so that's just a quick way to put you know a little something something on there so that is basically where I am for now and let's get to the rest of the video and the video will show you how I made this book. Have a great day. Okay, so here's the bag I want to use. I just love the butterflies. And what I've done, if you've seen in my past videos, I make templates so I can see for placement and see where I want to put, hmm, you know, it's just kind of makes it much easier to see this will be my spine, so I know that will be the wrap along the side. And this is the front. I've done it also with the passport. And then I just, for organization's sake, I just clip these and have it hanging right by my desk so I know where they are. I have this piece of purple tape, which is a also a ThermoWeb product, and it's a great way to kind of tack it down while I figure this out. Ooh, I love that one. Now, here's the other thing. So say I say, oh, I really like this. 
but I really love this one. This is my favorite. I can always add the thermal web adhesive to it and then cut it out and put it on. So if I wanted to do this butterfly here and this butterfly say here, I can do that. And so here's how I did it here. I cut out this little extra bit and that has an extra piece of the foam and adhesive. Cut it out and just boom, put it down. So that's also an option as I'm looking for placement. And I also love this Monarch. I'm not crazy with the placement of that. So let me figure this out. So I decided for my front cover, I'm going to have this. And I just take my purple tape and I wanna not cut my this butterfly here because I'll probably use that. And I'm just gonna go around and it can just be sketchy. It's just for, <laughs> that, was, that was lovely. I don't know if you can see this line. Just for, cutting purposes, but remember, I'm gonna cut this with the die so I don't have to be super precise. All right, so now I have a decision to make. You can see in this example, I actually used two different bags to make this, and I don't have a problem that there's a line, it doesn't match up perfectly. So for this bag, I have to decide, here's my first piece, do I want my cover to just wrap around and have it be this, you know, so where the butterfly would end up sort of coming out here. Or do I want two separate pieces? And that's something I have to decide. Because again, this is kind of bland, but I can always cut out another butterfly. One of the things you have to remember, this is going to be my front cover, so my holes are going to be here. For the back cover, I have to flip this over so that the holes will be on this side so they match. Okay, so my two pieces cut, and I did cut out that little extra butterfly to use. And I realize they'll probably, there'll be an overlap. I'm probably gonna overlap it this way. And this might bug me a so bit. So for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my foam adhesive and you do try not, like I crease that, you kind of probably don't want that, but I'm not very accurate with these things. And I'm just going to put this down. Now, I know that I have some play because it's, you know, like right here, it kind of goes, almost goes over the edge, but that's okay because I've cut a bit around the edge. So I have, a little bit of room. These are great to keep to use as um, craft sheets for inks and things. Not for heat, but for inks and things. So there's my first one. And then what I can do is take a bone folder. So naturally my bone, bone folder is somewhere very elusive. So I just grabbed an old card. It's like a credit card that you get in the mail saying buy this, buy that that I use for paint and as a scraper. And I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna make sure there's no bubbles because the truth is when I run it through the die, it's gonna press it to the, press it down anyway. So that's one. Then I will do the same with my other piece. All you have to do is line this, line up a side and the top and it'll be even. You won't have a problem with excess showing. But because I didn't really cut it straight to start with, that technique might not work as well. Just gonna cut off that extra little bit. Now I keep these extra little bits because you can use them, we'll see, we can use them for things like my little look that fits perfectly. So keep the extra little bits. I'm just gonna come through. Scrape that down. All right, let's get to die cutting. All right, now what I'm gonna do is make my cut. This is the die that I'm using. It's the journal die, it's one of my absolute favorites. And these are the shapes it comes with. So it has a cover, a book plate, a tab, and this can be used sort of as a, to go here as a wrap around for it or on the spine. So I'm to start, I'm just gonna cut this. 
and I'm going to be mindful of the direction that I'm cutting so I don't ruin my wonderful pieces. And this is how I figured it out, figure it out. So I know that for my cover, I need to have the holes on this side. So I'm going to play, figure out where my placement is, how I want that done. It's kind of hard to fit everything in the frame. And then I take my die. I'm going to take my die, I have the holes on this side, and I'm simply going to line this up. You can see, okay, so that's about the line where the line goes, and then slide it over so that my template is approximately in the right place. And I'm going to take a piece of the purple tape, which is great. It's, it's sort of a sticky, not too sticky tape that works really well for anchoring your pieces. And then what I'm going to do is just double check because this is pretty close on the line. So I really want to make sure that that line is going to be good. I think it'll be good. Double check. Yeah. Just by lifting up, double check. Okay. I'm going to take two plates my well-loved plates. Just wheel it. And I'm just going to put it in here and do a pass. Hopefully we get that edge. So if I don't get that edge, there's also tricks on how to fix it because not that that's ever happened to me and of course this is going to stick to the plate because I had foam. So every now and then because you're dealing with a fabric you might get a hitch. Like here's a hitch where it, it the fibers of the fabric didn't quite cut through and that's just because you know it's fibers they've got little strands sometimes. So that's that. I'm going to pull this off. Okay, off my purple tape. And there's my cover. Oh, I actually I really like that. Now you could say, oh, it's not centered. But remember, my spine goes here. So if I bend my spine, it's going to look like that. So that's actually really good. I like that. Then I have room for a word here, maybe. That's really fun. And we're going to figure out what to do with this part in a bit. So the other thing you want to do is if you have pokey holes, you need to take this out. Most of them pop out. Oops. But if you get too many, it's not going to be very happy and it won't cut as well. All right, so now I've got my front cover. And again, I'm not good in math, so I'm remembering that my front cover here, I need the holes to line up, which means my holes have to be on this side to make my book. And once I've figured that out, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn my die around so that my holes are on this side so that when I flip... Oops. When I flip my fabric down, yeah, I want the holes on this side. So holes, fabric's going to go down. That'll work. I guess I did it the wrong way on the other side. Oh, well. See? Messed up, didn't mess up. Awesome. So I've got my... So I kind of just basically want this edge pretty close to the edge. All right, so I'm gonna wing it a little. Hi, Inky friends. I'm going to fast forward this bit, so please feel free to listen to this little music ditty. Bigger 
reveal. Da, da, da. It's a miracle. Math be darned, I still did it. Okay, that's going to go like that. I kind of like this. Let's see. Okay, so there's my, my two pieces. And if I want, I can use the score lines. I can see the score lines. So you can kind of see, it's hard for you guys to see because it's shiny, but I can see them. There's score lines right here, along here. Now, if this was matte board, the score lines would be much more distinct. But because I'm doing it into a soft, spongy material, they're not as noticeable. That is all right. And there's my cover. And then what I do is you line up the middle, and that's what it's going to look like. So now let's figure out what we're going to do to reinforce this spine. Okay, before any further go for any further, I realize I have to cover my inside because this is double-sided. So you see, haha, -ha, sticky. So I have options again. I could use fabric. I can use mat board if I wanted it to be a sturdier, hard-covered book. But I've decided I'm going to go with paper. Paper gives it a little bit of stiffness, but will still leave it fairly flexible. And I've chosen this beautiful paper by Chow Bella, mainly because I just, I love this. I love this. And the outside doesn't have to match the inside. It's really up to you and what you want to do. Maybe you want to, or you use the same bag. Maybe you want to use a different bag, fabric. I love this and I love that it has the sound of the butterflies and music of spring training because I think what I'm going to do is cut that out and decoupage it on the cover. How cool would that be? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to figure out my placement where my line, um, holes are have to line up. So for example, this is the inside. So my cover, my inside, I have to flip this and I'm going to cut these papers out. I'll be back. Okay. I've cut my two pieces of paper. I ended up using, I had two pieces of the same paper, so I was able to um, manage to use that and then still keep the quote that I needed, so that'll work. And now I need to make sure, because again, we have to do math. So here's my book with my two, my, the, where the holes are. I'm going to flip this. And then this is what I want on the inside cover. And this is what I want on the backside cover. So knowing that, I have to put my holes on this side. I'm just going to place it just to give me an idea. Put that aside. Okay, I grab my die. I want the holes to go on this side. And I'm going to put this paper face down. So... I line it up like this. Should work. Again, incredibly important as long as my lines are even. And I'm going to go into detail on this first video so that in future videos I can just get the project done and link back. Okay, I've lined up my paper and my pads. Bring in my die cutter. Okay, let's listen to some more music. Okay, I'll just do that to the other side. So here's another good way to do the double check to make sure your hole's on, on the right side. I put my paper down, and then I take my back cover, and I go, okay, yep, I want the holes on this side. Yes, the holes are on that side. You can see the holes on that side. I have to double check because it's math, and if I don't, I tend to end up with my pieces cut all Okay, so I have my front covers, and my insides cut. And then what I'm going to do is simply peel off the inside, and I'm going to line up. top and a side with the holes and I'm not I'm just gonna lay it down to see how 
much. That. So that's pretty cool. I'll do the same to the other side. Before I assemble, I am going to just come in here and create that line. And a way to do it is, I mean, you could use a ruler, you can use the edge of the table to just get that line back. Because there's no... <laughs> Sorry, that's my cat. She wants to go out. She's not allowed out. And I just want to do that so that I have that edge. And then we're going to put the books together with eyelets. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do to reinforce this is use some super tape. And I'm just going to put it close to the edge. Okay, another fast forwarded bit. Enjoy. want to overlap those like that. One of the tricks to getting this tape out is to just take your pokey hole too and slide it like that. Super easy trick. I have got all of my tape free and I'm just going to line this the holes and the top and the bottom. Probably hard for you to see. So I'm lining up those two holes and then the middle hole. Sometimes they don't line up perfectly, but that's because we cut a piece and then we flipped it, we rotated it, but we just get it pretty close, pretty good. And now I have my, yes, how cool is that? I really like that. Then, all right, let's get fixing on the spine. Okay, so now I'm going to reinforce these a bit with some eyelets. And because I'm going to cover my spine, I decided I'm just going to do my eyelets on the inside. So the pretty side is on the inside. And I'm just going to... Oops. There we go. Again, it doesn't matter. It just helps give it that little bit of reinforcement. I probably should have used the bigger ones. I didn't think of it because this material is thicker. Actually, let me go do that for the other two. So what I'd have to do then is punch a hole with the bigger. And again, it doesn't really matter because we're really not going to see this. But so I'm going to just punch a hole there. There we go. Now I'm going to put the bigger stronger because I didn't think about it. Like if you look at these, the difference, look how skinny. But because we have the foam, I really do want the bigger one. And that way it'll go through. And am I bothered that they're not the same size? Uh, no. Mixed media. And there we go. Not see that holds much better than this one. So see, we learn as we go. You're getting all the hot tips today, which is good. Then you can make it straight up the right way from the get-go instead of, like me, learning every step of the way, every single time. Great. And actually, you know what I can do? Ha. I can probably pull this one out. If I was so inclined to be fussy, oh, maybe not. 
Okay, never mind. All right, so there's my inside, my outside. Okay, so now it's time to string my book. And basically what I'm gonna do is cut, I use one millimeter elastic, and I buy it from Amazon, it's nice and stretchy. And to figure out how much you need, you're just gonna do four lengths of your book. So one, two, three, four, and then I usually just do a little tail, a couple extra inches. Um, you can start from either side, but basically I'm gonna start from one of the side holes. I'm, and this is, I'm just starting from the top, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna pull it through. Then I'm gonna come on the inside and go straight down. So see, straight down. Then I'm gonna go to the middle. And this is how you create an invisible spine where you can't see it from the outside. And then I'm gonna go back up to the top, to the middle. And then over to the side. And then down, straight down. So it's basically just, once you do the first one, it's kind of obvious where you have to go. And then I'm gonna come over to the middle. Okay, so now I have one thread on the inside, and this was the starter thread. So see, I started on the first hole, threading inside, down, around, and about. And now I have one thread on the inside and one thread on the outside. And so all I'm going to do is complete that little set of loops like that. Now my thread's on the inside and I'm going to be able to tie it. And that gives me the ability to put in four signatures. So one of the things I wanna do though first is I wanna tighten it a little bit. Now, one of the tricky things, because this is a little bit flexible, I don't wanna do it too tight because I don't want it to bow, but I can always tighten it up. And it's more like a sound, like I want that sound. It's a good way to know where to go. So I just sort of, just want to kind of taunt. And I'm not going to do a big, strong tie because that way, if I have to, I can untie it. But yeah, this is the sound you want. Like a, oop, sorry. Like a twanging. And then what that does is it allows me to slide the books in as I need. Okay, so these books I can slide in. I can take another one. This one, th these are paper house and they're neat because they they have different ones. Like this is a to-do list. Ooh, I like it because you can mark them off. And then this is plans and it has the month, but you don't have to do every week. So it's kind of good for, it's just what makes it flexible. So if you don't have a lot to do one week, you don't have to use it. Or if you want to be it for specific things that you want to remember, it's kind of neat. And then I usually like to make my own books as well, but that's a whole other video. So here we are. See how that's pulling up a little bit? But that's okay. It's not going to go anywhere because of this. It just doesn't necessarily look fabulous. And again, it's just because I used the slick stuff. The slick. Um, if I wanted to, could I glue it down? I don't know. Probably. It might take glue. It's just really hard to glue on a plastic. So now I'm gonna do my spine. And basically, I'll take these books out. Again, I can show you how easy it is. Love this. And so what's nice about this book, this is going to be my on-the-go book. That's my plan. So I can always switch them out when they get full or when I, you know, I get bored and I wanna put in a different one. So I'm gonna do my spine. So duct tape. Washi tape. This washi tape is old and it's shredded and it wasn't working and same with this one. I kind of like the look of that, but I, it just didn't work. 
And then again, the gaffer tape, which I wish I could find the gaffer tape I have. It would be perfect. And you know, as soon as I complete this, I will find it. And I even tried this one. This is a Diane Reevely washi tape, and I kind of like it. But then I came up with, because the washi tape would be a little more complicated, I would have to decoupage it and whatnot. I came up with, all right, now I've got my double sided tape cut or easy cut adhesive as it's called, but it is a permanent double sided tape. And I have my piece of fabric. You know what? I'm gonna try that. So there's the double sided tape. And I'm gonna take this and position it. Like use that as a guideline. And there we go. Yes, that worked out well. That was less fussy. Okay, there is my spine. Look. And I want to put it in the middle. So I'm going to peel off. It's just a little tricky, but it's so worth it. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take my book and I am going to enough on top and on bottom. So I want it about that far. And then I'm going to put it so I can see how much fabric I have on either side at the same time. And lay it down. That looks about looks about right. And I'm going to fold it this way. Fold it that way. There we go. Cool. Pretty good. Pretty good job. And I do have a little overlap here, but that's okay. I kind of can't get it to tear because it's already adhered. I can always. Okay, that's good. I can always just cut it and then pull, pull some of this out. There we go. Yes. All right. I like it. So there we go. Now I can come along and put my books in. There's my book so far. Let's add some stuff to the covers. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I really, I saved that moth, and I really like that moth, but I think it's too much on the front cover. I want to add something else. I do have this as well, the sound of the butterfly. I tore that out of the paper. I think I might tuck it in there. I kind of want a word up here, I think, because that's a good spot for a word. If I want it in the middle, I can always tear that as well. So I might actually like that better there, but I also might add a flower. Uh, die cut, but we'll see. So I do, however, really like the moth on the back. Yeah, like right there. I think I really like that. So what I'm going to do, I've decided I want it flush. I don't want it raised like in the other book from a year ago at the beginning of this video. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of double-sided tape and I'm just going to double-sided adhesive. And I'm going to put it on. Oh, nope. Ah. Just trying to be sneaky and not waste tape. There we go. And I'm just going to burnish that and cut it out. And I'll be back. And I cut out my moth. I think he's a moth. Yes, I have ink all over my fingers. I was doing something inky yesterday. Okay. 
So here's my moth, and I like the idea of it just going over the... Now I'm going to draw in his antenna, antennae, I don't know how you pronounce it, and I don't want to cover up the key. So I think I'll put him right here. Okay, inky friends. Just adhered the moth, and now this video basically loops around to the front of the beginning of the video where I made my changes and finished off my book. So I hope you enjoyed this project today. Again, sorry that it was kind of choppy and all over the place, but I did learn about editing along the way and putting in background music and things like that. So uh, hopefully we get better from here. I get better at doing this from here on in, out. Thanks for joining me. Please subscribe. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. And there'll be details as well as a link to my blog post, which will have a supply list on it. Okay, have a great day.